Hi there, it's Nicole for Lawn Fawn, and today I'm going to share some stamping and coloring on wood slices to create gift tags or ornaments with a very rustic feel. These are some wood slices I've had for quite a while. You can get them. Um, I think Tim Holtz has some as um, packaged and stuff, or if you're handy, you can always cut your own and sand them down. I am going to take some deer images from the Toboggan Together and Cheery Christmas stamp sets and stamp them with some black VersaFine ink right on the surface of these wood slices. And it's okay if part of them are stamp off of the edge. That's definitely the look that I'm going for. I thought the deer especially would be great images for this kind of rustic type of feel. And the black VersaFine ink is great because it's just got um, a really bold black stamped line. Because I'm using acrylic blocks and I'm not using like a misty where I can repeatedly stamp the image one on top of another, um, I felt like this would be the best. Plus, I'm going to be using some Prismacolor colored pencils to color in my images on these wood slices. I'm just using a little post-it tape to help mask parts of the image. Got the little reindeer sitting here with the string of lights through his antlers, and then a couple of candy canes over there to the right. Then on the back, I am using the two from sentiment from Tiny Tag Sayings to customize it. Now, it needs a little hole in it to be able to string this up and make this either a gift tag or an ornament. I'm just using a drill bit to do that. Um, I'm not, <laughs> I, I have a drill and I, I know how to use it. I'm not super duper handy, but drilling holes is fairly simple. In fact, if you have a drill like this and don't have drill bits, a little drill bit uh, set is fairly inexpensive, and it's kind of just a great thing to have on hand if you don't already. Um, but it's fantastic for being able to drill perfect holes through these little wood slices. And I just starting it, and then I didn't want to drill through my mat, so I just picked it up. Very, very easy. I'm using a Swiffer dry cloth to pick up all those little pieces. A shop vac would be, or not shop vac, a little um, dust buster of some sort would be great to pick up those little shavings as well. I'm doing a set of three. The other two reindeer are standing reindeer. I picked my three favorite images from Lawn Fawn. These are not new. These have been out for at least couple years for one of the sets and I believe the other set was last year and they continue to be some of my favorites. I noticed someone mentioned on my YouTube channel or on somewhere here recently that they love that older stamp sets still get love, still get shown and there there's nothing wrong with using them and that's absolutely my feeling. We all have these stamp sets and love them and especially I find with my Christmas sets, it's because they're not something you maybe use year round. I love every year being able to pull out my Christmas sets again and revisit especially those images that I really like myself. When coloring on the wood, I really find, I personally like using the Prismacolor colored pencils. I think that it gives the best results. I have listed the colors I'm using along the top of the screen. The pencil number as well as the name of the color. So dark brown and burnt okra for my reindeer as well as a little peach beige for the lighter areas. Messy coloring. I am going to be using some Gamsol to blend these out really nicely and get rid of any of those pencil lines. Especially coloring on a surface that isn't smooth because this is a, a piece of wood and it's not a piece of paper. I really felt like I needed to use the Gamsol to get a nice smooth blend. I didn't try a blender pencil, but it probably would work as well. And 
if you colored a, with a little heavier hand and really worked on blending, you might be able to get it blended out with out Gamsol if you wanted to, but you can see as soon as you touch that Gamsol to the colored pencils, it just blends it out and smooths out those colored pencil lines so beautifully. I haven't used Gamsol in forever. It's another thing that I haven't done in a while. So it was super fun kind of revisiting this as well. And just playing along or doing something a little bit different. I thought these little rustic tags would be a super fun way to add a really, I am a huge fan of handmade tags on packages anytime, but especially at Christmas. Um, when we tend to all have more um, packages and things underneath the tree. And I like to find interesting and new ways to create tags. Maybe they don't all necessarily have to be paper, um, whether they be a clear type of tag or a shaker tag, or I created some wreath shaped tags that were actual little wreaths using the Lawn Fawn large wreath dies, things like that. I like to try to find ways to create something unique, something that can maybe be used after its initial use as a gift tag. These don't have anything else on the front. Um, to, they don't have a to and from type of, of greeting here on the front, so it doesn't take away from the cute little scene. And they could be hung on a tree and used as an ornament later on. So I really like to try to find ways to create something that can serve as a dual purpose. It's a great gift tag, and then it could be an ornament or a decoration. On the little lights there that are strung through his antlers, I did add some little white highlights with a white pen. My white pen did not really want to um, write over the colored pencil, the Gamsol, very well on these little wood pieces. And I think I probably didn't even need to do that because I added some glossy accents on top to give him that glass-like type of look. Um, and I think you kind of lose the effect of the little white highlights maybe a little bit. And then I took some Black Nouveau Crystal Drops for the nose on this deer. And I'm going to set that aside to dry while I color in my remaining two little rustic reindeer tags. Again, dark brown and burnt okra and a little peach beige for the reindeer, deco pink for the inside of the ear. Very messy coloring because you can see here as I color, it's not very nice and neat at all. It looks really messy. The white Prismacolor pencil is probably my most used. I have two of them and both of them have been sharpened down um, because I use them so much. It could be a great base. A lot of times I like to use it as a base and then color over that with my colored pencils, especially if you kind of don't want to use Gamsol. It will help a little bit with the blending. I did not do that here, but you could definitely try that if you wanted to. I am using the white. I didn't worry too much about the little spots on the back of the deer. And I colored over them with the brown because I knew I could go back over them with my white colored pencil and draw attention to those and really make them pop. And that way I didn't have to try to color around such a small little area too much. Even after you blend, you can always go back over it like I did here. I pulled in a little bit of the dark brown over the peach beige and then blended it out and that adds more depth and dimension to the face on the deer. One thing about coloring with colored pencils that I have found is I do this with anything I color, but I like to go over the eyes, the nose if it's applicable. Um, on the images when I'm finished coloring because they tend to get lost, especially with colored pencils underneath the coloring. Um, so I generally try to go over them on paper with a black pen. For these images, I chose to go over everything with some Nouveau crystal drops in black, and then the nose is either black or red, and it really makes them pop. 
I did draw a little line near, near the bottom to make it appear that my deer were standing in snow. I'm just using the white colored pencil for this. I'll blend it out with a little bit of Gamsol. It's not real noticeable, but it does add just a little bit to the scene. I think I probably could have eat it, even added some shadowing now that I look at it if I wanted to. It really wasn't the focus of the tag. I really just wanted to show the, the deer on the tag, and I don't think it makes that big of a difference. There's the little black eye, and here is the autumn red, which is my personal favorite red color from the Nouveau, the Tonic Nouveau line. I think it's a really pretty red. You can always tap the back of your paper or project to try to help even out any of those little drops if they tend to have a little bit of a point. And I'm taking Simply White and adding some little snowdrops all around. I don't think that stamping and embossing works really great on wood. I did try it um, on a sample um, just because I was curious. I wasn't terribly convinced it was going to work and it really didn't show up. So I thought some little dimensional snowdrops would be a great little addition to these tags and help show off the reindeer. So again, I'm going to set that one aside and work on my third and final tag. Same colors as before, cute little deer. Not gonna worry about those little spots on his back again. And you can really see here is a good example of the eye getting covered up with that kind of waxy film from the colored pencils. And it's really hard to get rid of unless you just simply color over it. Another thing to note, if when you stamp your images on the wood slices and maybe part of the line is a little faint or light, just because of the uneven surface, you can always take a black pen and kind of draw that back in. I know on the first tag I did, the reindeer sitting in the snow, kind of around one of the antlers and ears, the wood maybe wasn't as smooth as I wanted it to, it to be, and I... Um, part of it was a little bit faint and I wanted the outline to really show up. So I did take a black pen and go over that to make it stand out. If you ever need to change the color on the tip of your stump pencil and you can't get it off, just kind of rubbing it off on a scratch piece of paper, sandpaper, they even if you buy a little Gamsol kit with a stump pencil, a lot of times will come with a little piece of sandpaper. You can sand the tip, tip of your stump pencil and that will remove that color from the tip as well. Ready to add in my little eye. I think I'll do a red nose for this guy too. I really like the little red touch on these where there's so many neutrals, I think it really pops. Again, I'll add in some little snowflakes or snowdrops with the Simply White. The Simply White Nouveau Crystal Drops is my absolute favorite. I find so many uses for it and I really love it. I think it stands out really nicely. I will let these completely sit and dry. It will take a good 24 hours for Nouveau products, Nouveau Crystal Drop products to completely harden. So you wanna keep that in mind. Um, don't set anything on top of them or it will squish the, even if they feel dry to the touch, it can flatten them a little bit. So I would suggest kind of just letting them sit out overnight or whatever and coming back to them the next day and they should be ready to use. And there, a little bit of blue that was left over on my stump pencil was transferring to the snow along the bottom edge of the tag. So I did use some sandpaper to get rid of that. And that I just went over it with my white pencil again. Once I have all the tags finished, the, the Nouveau drops are all dry, I'm ready to take some twine and thread it through those holes I drilled in each of the tags. I thought rustic twine would really go with the feel of these tags the best. So I'm just gonna thread that through and then knot it into a little knot there and then trim the ends. 
If you wanted, you could even wrap some around the base of the string after you've done this and tie it in a little bow. And that would add even more texture to your little tag. And I made sure that I drilled a big enough hole that it would be easy enough to thread whatever string or ribbon that I wanted right through the top of that and it wouldn't be any problem. So here is a look at all the tags. They all have to and from stamped on the back and all ready to be tied to a package. Thanks for joining me today for these rustic tags featuring stamping and coloring on wood slices. The supplies I use to create these tags are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here are a couple more videos featuring lawn fawn stamps and dies that you might be interested in. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.